What up, everybody? Instructive Beats, back with video two of our adding, subtracting decimals playlist. Today, we're focusing on borrowing while subtracting, just really reviewing that basic skill with whole numbers right now for this video that we're going to use when we do decimals as well. So today, I will be able to subtract whole numbers when borrowing, right? So that's our objective. Hopefully, that makes sense. Could be a bad sentence, but that's why I teach math and not reading. Although, you should check out the Instructive Beats reading songs. They're awesome. So, our steps for adding and subtracting are the same as the first lesson. So, you don't need to recopy them in your notes if you did the first video, but we want to line up the place values, and we know we do that by lining up our decimal. We want to fill in place value holders if we need to, if, if that makes us feel better about life. We want to take it one step at a time, and at the end, we want to drop it like it's ha ha. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started today. So we always want to start out with conceptually what's happening. So this is what's happening when we're borrowing, right? We have, we're starting with six and we're trying to subtract eight, but you can't do that, right? If I have six dollars, you can't beat me up and take six or eight, sorry. Um, and so you, the six has to go next door, right? And you have to borrow, but because this is a 50, you're not going to borrow one because that wouldn't help us. That's going to make a seven. We're going to borrow a 10 which makes this 40, and then when you add the 10 to the 6, this now becomes 16, right? So 16 minus 8 now you can do, which is 8, and now you have 40, right? And you're trying to take away 80, but again, you can't do that. You can't beat me up and take 80 if I only, if I only have 40. And so the 40 is going to come next door to the 400, but the the thing that teachers have always told us is that we're getting 10 more, and that's not true because this is a 100, uh, this Sorry, this is a hundreds place, so I'm actually going to borrow a full 100, which is going to make this 300, and I'm going to make this 140, right? So now 140 minus 80 is 60, put my plus sign there, and now I have 300, and it can't do 300 minus 800, right? So we're going to come over here next door and borrow, but we're not getting 10 more. 10 more wouldn't help us. That only make us 310. We're actually getting a thousand more so sorry that's going to turn into two thousand and then this is going to turn into one thousand three hundred i don't have space to cross it out so now thirteen hundred minus eight would be five hundred and then i don't have anything here so if it, you know if it makes you feel better you put a zero but two thousand minus zero is two thousand so your answer is going to be two thousand five hundred 68 right so that's what's happening when you're borrowing you're actually borrowing a full group from that place value so it's a 10 if you're borrowing from the tens it's a hundred if you're borrowing from the hundreds it's a thousand if you're borrowing from the thousands now the shortcut for that right is just to do 3458 minus 888 and we'll talk about this next sorry that should be a six there you go and so can't do that so this is going to become a 4 and that becomes a 16 which is 8 and I can't do 4 minus 8 so I borrow 1 and so this becomes a 3 and this becomes a 14 and again that becomes a 6 and then I can't do that so I borrow right so this is kind of the shortcut that we do that we might have been taught but if you don't really understand what's happening then you're not really learning a lot you're just kind of learning a procedure we always want to know why it works so when I borrow 10 from here, that becomes 16, which is the same because that's my ones place. When I, right here, when I'm borrowing a so-called 10, I'm actually borrowing a 100, and so this is going to be this is really 140, which makes sense because if you had 14 tens, that'd be 140. And right here, this is not really 13; it's really 1,300, which makes sense because if you have 13 thousands, that would be 1,300. So the place values matter. You need to line up the place values when you are subtracting. And so I want you to know the shortcut because that's what we're going to use. But I want you to know why it works. So let's take a look at our steps for the shortcut. This is what I ask myself. More on the top, no need to stop. More on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. Right. So when we're doing our shortcut, this is kind of the rhyme that I ask myself. Okay, so sometimes you have to borrow more than once, right? And so a lot of people, they get really nervous when they see these long problems. But step three says we want to 
take it one step at a time. So the way that I know, first of all, that my place values are lined up, even though I don't have a decimal here is, I know that when it's a whole number, there still is a decimal. It's next to my ones place, right? So my decimals are lined up, which means my ones and my tens and my hundreds and all my place values are now lined up. You don't have to draw the decimals there, but that's just, you always want to remember there is a decimal next to your ones place. So now we want to take it one step at a time. So I'm going to grab these. You can use index cards, but this is just going to kind of help us take a look at one place value at a time, starting with our ones place. And so I come here and I ask myself, okay, well, is there more on the top? No. More on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. So I'm going to look at my next place value. And this is going to become a 7, which is really a 70, right? We want to know that. And I'm going to get 10 more and make that a 16. And now 16 minus 9 is 7. And now I'm asking myself, okay, 7 minus 8. More on the top or more on the floor? Well, more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to borrow from my 7. And it's going to become a 6. And really the 600 is becoming a, or sorry, the 700 is becoming a 600. We want to know what's happening. And now I'm getting 10 more here. So this is really going to become a 17. And now 17 minus 8, I know is 9. 6 minus 3, more on the top. No need to stop. I just keep subtracting. And then I'm going to keep going to my next place, right? And I want to take it one step at a time. 5 minus 2, more on the top. No need to stop. So that's 3. I can put my comma there. So now let's look at the next place value right here. So I'm going to cover that up. 4 minus 6, more on the floor. Go next door and get 10 more. So this is really going to become a 2. I'm going to get 10 more to this place value. And again, this is just a shortcut. And so 14 minus 6 is 8. And then 2 minus 1, more on the top. No need to stop. That's 1. And that's my last place value, right? So when I move this, I had to borrow a lot. But because I took it one step at a time, just asking myself more on the floor, more on the, more on the top, or more on the floor, I came to a pretty good answer of 100. Sorry, 183,397. So I want you to go ahead and try this, okay? Thinking about this word right here tells you that you are subtracting. The difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So when it's asking you what the difference is between these numbers, you're actually subtracting. So go ahead and push pause, line them up, uh, making sure your place values are lined up, taking it one step at a time and barring when you have to. So hopefully you just push play again and you've already tried this problem and it should be on your notes or wherever your teacher wants you to write it. And so again, these are both whole numbers, which means I know the decimal place is just next to the ones. And so I don't have to do this, but I like just to get in the habit of it. And so I'm going to line my ones place up, my tens place, my hundreds place, my thousands place, and my ten thousands place. And I'm going to subtract and I know my decimals are there because they're next to my ones place. And so now I'm just going to take it one step at a time. Five minus six. More on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. That's going to become a 15, which is going to be 9. I can drop it like it's hot if I want to. 3 minus 7, more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. That's going to become a 13, which is a 6. 2 minus 2 is 0. Thousands. 7 minus 8, more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. That's going to become a 5. That's going to become a 17. So 17 minus 8 is 9. 5 minus 3, more on the top, no need to stop. And then I can put my place values here if you want to. Place value holders, you don't have to. Um, 5 minus 0 is 5. 4, minus, 4 million minus 0 million is 4. And so your difference between those numbers would be 4,529,069. And you don't have to put the decimal, but we're just practicing to get ready for our next couple lessons. As always, please check us out at InstructaBeats on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram at, at InstructaBeats or email us at InstructaBeats at gmail.com. Please make sure you click the thumbnail on the screen to take you to our Dividing, Multiplying, Adding, and Subtracting Decimal song. And make sure you subscribe. InstructaBeats out!